The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. And I wanted to uh, start the show uh, talking a little bit about the Alibaba uh, IPO that's going to be coming out uh, in a week or so. I guess it's next week. Uh, this reminds me of when I worked at Drexel Burnham. Uh, every Monday morning, there were 22 stockbrokers in the office and uh, four commodity brokers. The four commodity brokers, we were ba basically a separate unit, you know, working out of the New York uh umbrella so we had our office in beverly hills but we really were a new york unit so we didn't have to go to those stock meetings because we didn't do any stocks at all we were registered for stocks but we didn't do any of that but we used to go to the meetings uh, early in the morning on mondays because they had wonderful uh, buffet set up there uh, for everybody so it was fun and you got to uh you know you see the brokers that you don't get to see all the time and stuff so you're only in there half hour but it was fun but one of the the things that i remember the most was uh everyone drexel had a very high clientele high class clientele it was a boutique firm uh bob hope was uh one of the clients there a bunch of other uh you know actors and stuff were there but he was probably the big well, he was the biggest, no question about it. Walter Annenberg also had a, a small account there, too. But uh, the uh, main thing was is at this one particular meeting, they had to move a bunch of stock. And this is what stockbrokers do. They sell stock. So if they have clients that want to sell stock, you know, they say we have to move, you know, 100,000 shares of AT&T. Well, this one particular stock had not been doing very well, and they, the, you know, they were asked to sell this stock. And one of the senior brokers got up, Gene Fairman, and uh, he said, you know, he said, what we got to do, guys, is we have to put some lipstick on this pig and get it out the door. And I think that's what they're doing with Alibaba. Folks, something's wrong here because if they've got a company – that can, it's going to control 80% of the online sales in China, and they're letting us in on the deal. The big question is why. That's my question is why. The other question is why are they having this dog and pony show over 12 major cities all over the world over the next two weeks promoting the stock? That stock should self-promote. You wouldn't have to do anything to that stock to get it to move, just like Google. I mean, you didn't have to do anything to Google to get it to move. I posted the chart of the the, the biggest IPO before this one, uh, which was Facebook, and you can see Facebook opened at 44, and over the next uh, two months it went down to 18. So all I'm telling you is I I wouldn't buy Alibaba on the first day. Maybe it'll be like, you know, maybe it'll go straight up. I I don't know, but all I'm telling you is there's something not right here. Uh, they shouldn't have to promote this stock at all. This, there's also something else that's important. I don't. I'm not really understand how it works. But one of my friends who's in Hong Kong knows the uh, this business pretty well, and he we were talking this morning, and he said that this is not a, you're not buying Alibaba stock. You're buying a Cayman Island corporation that controls the Alibaba stock. So you're really not a stockholder. You're a stockholder in the Cayman Island Company. That's is what I was told, and I don't know if that's true or not. But if that's the case, you have very little uh, to say about it. But there's something not right here. This stock should not have to be promoted. It's the the largest you know uh, nation in the world. You know, 1.6 billion people, and they have a, an inroad on the the marketing of this stuff. So just be really careful buying this stuff on the first day. You know, wait two days. You know, wait three days. Whatever you have to do is wait a little bit. But I think it would be, uh, it would be made. And the other thing is, is if the market has topped here, and we've made a double top in the New York Stock Exchange Index, uh, it looks that that's what the charts look like. Uh, so I would be really, really careful because if we have made a double top here, uh, these IPOs uh, they go with the rest of the market usually. So. There's some things here that you really ought to consider, you know, before you uh, before you buy this stock. Uh, we've been watching Sarah and I've been watching this stock for nine years because it's been trading in Hong Kong, uh, you know, during that time. So it's uh, it's going to be very interesting. But boy, they they certainly have the uh, uh, the market in China from what uh, what all 
what what everybody's saying, but boy, why are they? Why do they have to go out on a dog and pony show to uh, you know to do the promotion? I know it's because of the brokerage firms. You know that's what they do. Uh, they're hyping the stock, but you know just just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Uh, because buying it on the first day, you don't have any pattern to go with or anything like that. If you wait a little bit. You know, you might be able to do it. The other thing is, is you know, Yahoo owns a great deal of that stock, and Yahoo might let some of it go uh, at that time, and that would put extra supply uh, in on the market. But if you know, we'll wait and see. But anyway, just be really careful. Uh, that's the only thing I would would mention to you at this time. Um, and believe me, I know about as much about stocks uh, as I know about pork bellies, and they don't trade pork bellies anymore. Okay, let's talk about the real world. Uh, the first chart that I posted in, I'm going to do it again because it's such an important chart, and that is the uh, U.S. dollar index. Uh, we're, this is a, a weekly chart going back uh, five years, and you'll be able to see that uh, we are uh, very, very close. Uh, in fact, we are trading right near there right now uh, at the uh, – 85 right around the 85 level that takes out the high that we made in uh, June of uh, 2013 it completes an ABCD pattern uh, up here at the uh, uh, 85 level uh, that goes back all the way through uh, 2010 and so we have been in this for uh, five years now and we're making a, a three drive pattern with a Gartley pattern there's a lot of things that say there's going to be a great deal of resistance coming into the dollar index at 85. Now, that's the way it looks from a chart perspective, but what I try to do is when I'm looking at these uh, currencies like this, I like to break them down to look at each one of them to see, you know, what they're doing uh, as, as we're going, uh, as we're reaching this level of 85 in the dollar index. And the one that I'm going to show first will be the uh, euro because we are very, very close um, to a 61% retracement on the euro. Um, we also have some really nice uh, cycles that are forming in the euro that have been going back for the last several years. This is basically an 18-month cycle that's due to bottom in September. And uh, the number on the euro is at 128, so we're we're trading at 129 right now, which is only 100 pips away, and you know it moved 200 pips just the other day, and so this is uh, it's heading down to that way, to that area. Now we have a news announcement coming out of Europe, I believe, next week, and this is the uh, the referendum that Scotland is going to uh, pull away from the euro and uh, be autonomous from the UK. Uh, my guess is that's a slam dunk. I don't see how that's not going to happen. Uh, whether they pass it or not, I don't know. But it, uh, uh, the Scottish people that I know don't like to be uh, ruled by anybody, and they've been ruled for 400 years over there. So this might be their chance to pull away. Whether that will have anything to do long term on some of these things, I'm not really sure. I do know that uh, there's support there at 128. That's a 61% retracement of the low we made uh, last August, uh, excuse me, August of 2012. So it's a, a very, very uh, important level, you know, to look at. Because if we break that, we could easily be looking at 105 in the euro because it could break below those lows of 2011, 2012. And remember, the euro's had a, a very uh, – uh, clouded past I, if it came out trading at 135 in 1999 uh, it went up to 160 it went from 160 all the way back to 84 uh, all the way back to uh, 160 again and uh, we made the last time we made the 160 was back in uh, 2008 right before the market stock markets of the world uh, got under the um, influence of this sort of debt and that's what uh, that's what caused the uh, the move down so we have some really wild swings happening in the euro you know all the time so it's a, in fact it's a, it's the greatest thing to trade of anything that you could possibly think of because it's very very difficult to manipulate things for for more than just an hour or so and uh, it follows the technical patterns very well and it follows the fibonacci summation sequence uh you know right to the letter so that's something that uh is very important you know from a trading uh, perspective. Now, since we were talking about the British pound, I wanted to, to bring this one up because uh, we've had this is another long-term weekly chart that we've had. 
Uh, we've posted these many times here in Tiger TV. Uh, on this particular one, you can see that the uh, pound made the uh, big ABCD pattern up there at the 172 level. Uh, that was just in uh, July. And what's happening now is we're getting ready to come down to the 61% retracement at around the one the 157 level. Now, if that's the case, it's going to take something like a secession of uh, Scotland to get it down there would be my guess. But we've had a, a very strong move of 500 pips. That's a lot in a currency, folks. Uh, and that's what it looks like. Our target level is going to be around the one uh, the 150 uh, the 158 level. So that's what we're that's what we're watching uh, at that time. So we're having a little bit of a, a rally, snapback rally in the market right now. We've had a uh, situation where the uh, stocks uh, yesterday, uh, especially Apple. If you followed uh, the Apple IPO or <laughs> the Apple um, uh, meeting that they had in Las Vegas, uh, it was really amazing because the whole market was being pulled by uh, by uh, Apple. It was it was just amazing how one stock could move so much. Uh, move so much paper, and of course it had a a ten percent swing during the day, which was uh, you know quite unusual, uh, especially for that stock. And uh, what caused it, I'm not sure. It doesn't make any difference. The reason's more important, and we don't know the reason. So, you know, that's basically uh, you know the bottom line of uh, you know what we're watching here when we're looking at some of these things. So the next question we're going to have here is we got a break coming up, I think, here pretty quickly. And when we get back, well, we'll go to we'll do one other currency uh, while we're here. We'll do the Swiss franc because uh, it also is one that looks uh, uh, at a it's at a very very critical level, and we want to be able to, uh, to be able. Oh, it's the wrong chart. Give me a second, folks. I have to I have to get the right chart up. Oh, doggone it! That's the chart. Let's do the. Oh, here it is. I've got it. Hold on. Just takes me a second. I want to do these longer term ones because we're able to see them see them a lot easier. And that gives us a, a better chance of uh, seeing the long-term tens because we are right now, as we speak, we are hitting the 61% retracement of the highs that we made back in May and June in the uh, Swiss franc. So this would be an area where uh, we're looking to go short the Swiss franc versus the U.S. dollar on a long-term basis because this market is in a downtrend. It has been since 2012. These are lower tops that we're looking at. And so that defines what the, uh, you know, what the uh, uh, pattern is or what the trend is. If you have lower tops, you're in a downtrend. If you have lower bottoms, or higher bottoms, you're in an uptrend. That's the bottom line of, uh, you know, what we're looking at. So if you keep that in mind, you, uh, you'll be, uh, you should be okay. That's the way it looks uh, from a technical standpoint. We've got the Dow uh, coming back strong today. And we'll be back right after this break. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Yeah. Okay, folks, uh, I've had a request to take a look at crude oil. Uh, I posted an end to the Tiger TV, and as you can see, uh, we are making our third test of the 786 retracement down at this 91 level. Uh, we have taken out the lows of last year by just a few pips, which is not unusual. Uh, but, but we're at a very critical level here because if we get below 91 uh, in crude oil. That's going to tell us that we're most probably going down uh, to the next ratio, which is down around uh, 82. So that would be a $9,000 drop per contract. Uh, in crude oil if it does break that 91 level. But right now it's setting right at that 786 level. Um, it's been under a great deal of pressure, ha as have all commodities, you know, other than cattle. And that's had a little bit of a correction. But we've had, uh, you know, a, basically a collapse in wheat, corn, and beans and uh, anything that's growing. And uh, gold and silver have been under a great deal of pressure. And uh, crude oil also, along with gasoline, and uh, heating oil. Uh, gasoline prices now in uh, Tucson are going to be under uh, $3.20 a gallon for the first time in about four years. Uh, this week uh, was one of the news things that they talked about uh, yesterday. So that'll be uh, interesting to see how much lower you know, gas prices uh, are getting ready uh, to drop to. Uh, one other question that someone had was about the price action in Apple yesterday. Uh, there's no way to really 
uh, you know, it's just in a very emotional market that once it starts moving in one direction or another, that's what happens. I mean, it didn't do anything different. Uh, the market's rally up to the 103 per share level was nothing more than a 786 retracement of the previous five, do uh, five days down. And then it went back down and just made a big ABCD level down at that 93 and then rallied back, you know. So it's really uh, doing the normal stuff that uh, that stocks do. So that's pretty much what we're looking at. I want to get back to the uh, foreign currency markets because uh, these are the ones that uh, they're very, very important to us. Even if you don't trade them, they are, they're are they still extremely important because uh, it's how money moves. These markets are so large that, uh, you know, they, they're – thousands of times bigger than the stock market. This is real money. This is whenever you buy something that's made in China or Australia or anything like that, it's got to be converted back into the uh, currency of the originating country, and that's why we have these Forex banks and these huge Forex markets are basically moving money around. Uh, as you can see, this is the long-term chart of the Australian dollar going back uh, over a year. And uh, we're making a 61% retracement today. Uh, we've had a very strong move down in the Australian dollar of uh, 300 pips uh, in one week, which is a huge amount, as you can see from this. chart this hasn't happened this way in a very very long time and believe me that shouldn't have anything to do with what's going on with the referendum in scotland there's got to be something else uh, our friends up north of a bird and that's for the canada and i wanted to put this pattern in because it's a very unusual one because of the way that it got to the 61 percent retracement it hit it exactly uh yesterday and then also again today uh, at that 10, uh, 110 level, and uh, it's uh, come down uh, almost 75 pips in the first day or so. So, so that's telling us that that 61% retracement in the Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar does have a great deal uh, of importance. Now, if we get above that, you know, all bets were off, and you could easily see it run to 112 or 113 without any trouble at all. But right now. It's setting exactly where it should be if this pattern is completed at, uh, at the 110.25 uh, level. We're now trading at the 109.60 uh, level. So that's something else that, we're, that, that I'm watching as a trader. This is what I do. Uh, I think I can benefit you folks because I do understand Forex a great deal. It's by far the easiest market to trade because it trades – you know, 24 hours a day, five and a half days a week, and it has pretty good liquidity. Uh, pretty good liquidity is the understatement of the year, and it gives the the patterns that we see are just uh, really spot on. They're they're not they're not affected very much by uh, uh, you know other people in their trading because there's so many people trading this that not one person could come in and make a uh, you know make a market for it or anything like that. That's just not going to happen. That's just uh, it's just too big. That's all, all you can really do. Okay, we got the Dow is uh, down, uh, still up 23 on the day, and the rest of the markets are holding their own. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com.
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, welcome back. And we're going to take a look at uh, the Japanese yen versus the U.S. dollar on a weekly basis. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we tested the 61% retracement. Uh, and then over the past uh, year, uh, we have basically been in a very, very tight consolidation range, only making a 382 retracement of the low that we made back in 2013. And now we've broken to the upside. Folks, this chart is a very powerful chart, and it certainly looks like the yen wants to go to 112 uh, to the dollar. We're trading at 106 right now, which is, uh, you know, 600 pips away, and that's equivalent to well over uh, $6,000. So this could be a, a really strong breakout uh, to the upside in the uh, Swiss franc, excuse me, the Japanese yen on a daily basis. So that's the, uh, the main thing. I want to clarify something, folks, on my a little uh, tirade about uh, Alibaba. The, one of the main reasons why I wouldn't like to buy it on the original opening is you really don't have a pattern to hang your hat on, and that's the tough part. When, when uh, Google came out in August, uh, I believe it was August of 2004, 
Uh, it had a really wild trading day, and the, the market had some really big swings, and it made a 78.6% a re, uh, retracement in the middle of the day. It pulled back to about $70 a share. It had been about a 125 and that was the place to buy it. As a matter of fact, I, I actually bought 200 shares uh, of Google because I used Google every day, and I thought it was a you know tremendous thing. And I was just buying it mainly because of the 786 retracement and the fact that there were so many people trading it that day. And I had a place to put a stop on it. I got on an airplane to go to Las Vegas for the money show. When I got off the plane, I think it was trading at 135 or something like that. I got out of it at you know a little above 100, but uh, it was a I should have. I probably should have kept it because I think it went higher, but you know, I'm just joking. But it did. Uh, you know, just it, the, the problem with Alibaba is wait till it trades a little bit so you can put a parameter on the risk that you have. You know, what you're what you're really trying to do because the risk is the only thing you can control. You can't control anything other than the risk of what you're doing. Okay, those are the currencies uh, that I wanted to cover. Uh, we're at a very very critical level coming up here in the U.S. dollar at the 85 level. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, it's never easy, but it's going to be uh, very, very interesting uh, to say the least. Okay, now we need to uh, take a look at the uh, Treasury bonds. And it'll only take me one second to get those up here and we'll be ready to go. And there they are. We've had a pretty good move down in bonds and they uh, are again uh, looking like we've made a major top up here. Uh, on this daily chart that we had uh, when it made the 61% retracement uh, about 10 days ago up at the 141 level and now we've been down just about every day since and we're trading at 137 uh, this market looks like it's it wants to go to 136 folks I mean that's uh, excuse me 126 without any trouble at all this looks very very negative and as we as we said before and we really need to show this and that is the Treasury the Treasury note market versus the Treasury bonds because the note market is much larger and it has been far weaker for a, a long period of time and so we're going to uh, we'll look at both of these together and you'll be able to see I hope we'll be able to see just give me a second here yes we will that's good you'll be able to see here that uh, this is a really a beautiful a beautiful chart here on this uh, notes versus the bonds the blue line uh, is the 30 year bond and the chart itself is the is the is the note the 2 to 10 year notes and as you'll notice here when the bonds made a new high uh, back in uh, late august early july uh, late August, early September, uh, you'll notice that the notes were making a lower high. That was a sign of really strong uh, divergence, and the notes have been the ones to be short because they're the ones that have come down the most of uh, any of these things that we're, uh, that we're watching. The junk bonds that we're watching uh, have also broken quite a bit uh, to the downside. You know, not anything really dramatic as of yet, but at least they started, uh, you know, working uh, in the right direction. I think we need to take a look at that because I haven't updated it in uh, a day, uh, two days, and I wanted to make sure that that was, in fact, what we were seeing. Oh, indeed, we were. We've had a big break here uh, in these this junk bond ETF that we've been watching. And it is, uh, in fact, it's come down to the 61% retracement already uh, in a matter of uh, just seven trading days. So that's a, uh, you know, that's another one that you want to, uh, you know, keep in mind that these, these more, well, higher interest rates are coming, folks. I don't think the Federal Reserve is going to be able to do anything about it. And I firmly believe that uh, the problem is the Federal Reserve, but whether that I'm going to be right about that or not remains to, to be seen. Remember, this is the person who didn't think colored TVs and microwave ovens were here to stay. So uh, just keep that in mind when you listen to my rhetoric here. It's all pattern recognition. I don't really understand the fundamentals, don't propose to. I don't want to. All I need to know is, you know, where these uh, – the prices are going along with the patterns. That's primarily, you know, what I'm really trying to uh, do when I'm uh, watching these markets. So that's the bottom line. In the bonds, they look lower. Uh, they're getting weaker uh, each day. They're no, they don't rally at all. If we get a big rally in stocks, uh, the bonds don't even move at all. There's somebody pressuring the bonds. Uh, 
Uh, and if you'll remember, one of the flashpoints that uh, J.R. Rickards talks about, the fellow from the CIA who wrote the book, uh, The Death of Money, one of the flashpoints is the possibility of the collapse in the bond market. So we've got to keep an eye on that because China and Japan buy so much of our of our foreign debt. And uh, p- partly the reason they do that is uh, uh, – is a mystery to me, but that's the way that they do it, so who knows. All I know is, folks, that Spanish debt and Irish debt is yielding uh, less than you get on the U.S. market, which means they prefer the quality of uh, Spanish bonds and Irish bonds to U.S. Treasury bonds. And believe me, Spanish and Irish bonds are not rated AAA. Uh, Even the the, uh, government paper is not rated AAA. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. I think we still are, but at one time uh, we were not uh, AAA, but uh, I believe we're back at the AAA status, you know, once again. So that's uh, the main thing that we're, we're keeping an eye on here. Okay. Um, the uh, next thing I wanted to mention was uh, about the stock market. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange Index did not take out the high uh, from July the 3rd by more than three points. It made a high of 11,008. The high on the July 3rd was 11,005. So that basically uh, puts a double top in place, and the market has already you know, sold off a little bit uh, to the downside. Nothing dramatic as yet. I, I believe what you saw on Apple yesterday is a prelude of what's to come, folks. We're going to start seeing swings like that in all kinds of stuff, not just uh, stocks. You're going to see it in bonds and currencies and uh, commodities. You're going to start seeing some really wild things happening. And uh, that's because this risk-off thing that everybody on Wall Street has been using is just about over. And uh, then they're, they're going to have to see, uh, you know, who's going to, you know, stand to the bar and take the risk on some of these trades because straight-up markets like we've had in stocks just do not happen very often. Those are outlier events, folks. They are just very, very rare. That's uh You know, that's all I can say is it's coming. Uh, Basil mentioned about the VIX index, and we should take a look at that because it's actually held up relatively well given the fact that, uh, you know, the market had such a big run-up. The the VIX did not make uh, new new lows during this last run. In fact, it uh, only went above the 786 for a few days and uh, has held relatively well, but we should be getting ready for another leg in this uh, in this VIX index. In other words, volatility starting to increase uh, a great deal because I believe we're going to see the VIX at a, way above 60 at some time between now and the end of the year. Uh, a lot of people say it's going to go to 9 or 10, and it probably could, but I still think it'll go to 60 too. So we'll see if, uh, if I'm going to be uh, correct on that. We'll have to let history tell us if that's going to be uh, our barometer barometer of what we're looking at. Um, some, <laughs> someone's asked me my question about Apple. Uh, all I do is look at the stocks. Um, you know, it split seven for one. It's back where it was, the same price when it was trading around 703, uh, you know, uh, a year and a half ago before it went down to 385. So this could be a double top or it could not be a double top because if we go above the close above the 105 level, that would tell us that this is not a double top, that this is market wants to go to go higher and you can't stand in front of it. There's just nothing you can do. You just got to wait and see the let the patterns tell you that that's what's going to happen. You know, that's the bottom line. So remember that that's it's all about risk control for uh, I've had a request to take a look at gold, which uh, we're really going to cover the gold uh, uh, tomorrow, of course, but we'll also do it today uh, because we've had a uh, market. This market is going lower, folks. Uh, you know, it's just really – it's making a little three-drive pattern here again on the uh, – I'll do the uh, the 30-minute here quickly, but uh, it's just a, just a small three-drive pattern that's occurring here. Uh, I don't think it's going to mean very much at all. Uh, but then we'll, we'll switch over and we'll go to the uh, longer-term uh, daily and weekly chart on gold because I believe we're heading down. We're already we've already broken below the seven eight six. We've we've extended past the A B C D in gold. I mean, this market is screaming that it wants to go lower. It's just like all the commodity markets. They're just uh, you know they're they're just looking very very bad. You know, 
gold had a chance uh, several months ago to really take off. And what we do, we go up and rallied up to 1350 and stopped dead in our tracks. And now, you know, we're in a downtrend in gold. Let me just show you this weekly chart. This is a very interesting chart because it shows the downtrend of the lower tops. And it shows the pattern, this ABCD pattern. It's going to take us down near the double bottom again at the $1,170 per ounce level. But until we get there, we're going to hit $1,200 $1, an ounce to see if we will bounce uh, bounce off of that. So here comes the weekly chart of gold. And you'll be able to see that the price objective on this swing is uh, around $1,200. I think it's $1,212 or $1,200 a share. Silver looks even worse. We'll, we'll cover this again because I know you folks like to look at these uh, ETFs in them, and silver is one of the better ETFs because it tracks pretty well. But the silver chart, you know, folks, it's uh, this one looks like it's got 17 uh, written all over it. And uh, we posted this many times before, but it's worth looking at it again because now we're getting really close. We're only uh, we're only dollar thirty away uh, in that uh, price of uh, of silver. So uh, it looks like to me that we're going to be looking at another dollar thirty lower in silver, down around seventeen dollars and sixty cents uh, an ounce, and uh, and that doesn't mean it's going to stop there either, because you know it certainly could. But uh, this is a, a seven eight six retracement of the low we made back in two thousand and eight, where we hit uh, nine dollars an ounce. Then we went to forty nine dollars an ounce. It increased by five times. And then what we've done is we've given back 78% of this, and we're now down around $17.60 is what our target is. We're trading at $18.93 now. But at $17.60, you have to take a look at it uh, from the long side, but not here. It looks like it wants to go, you know, to go higher, I mean lower. I mean look at the trend uh, to the downside. <laughs> so, I'm sorry for laughing, but someone asked me a question and say, if it's so easy to do this, why don't you just go long stocks? Well, at, at sometimes I do go long stock indices and stuff, but folks, I'm looking at major patterns in these stock indices. These are these are ones you're not going to see in your lifetime, especially me. But to you folks in your 50s, you'll not see this pattern again. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is happening everywhere. It's New York Stock Exchange Index, NASDAQ, S&P, Dow Jones, transportation, utilities. They're all there. I mean, this is the patterns that we look at. Now, whether that's going to be, uh, you know, the thing that makes it move or not, I don't know. All I can tell you is that it's, uh, it's something that uh, you really need to watch very, very closely because it's, uh, you know, it's very, very important. That's the, you know, the bottom line. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these things because it gets to be a little bit squirrely at times. We're getting a good rally right now in stocks, which after the break that we had, we had 100 points down to the Dow, and every time it goes 100 points, it's been a buying opportunity. So keep in mind that one of these times it's not going to be. Uh, we will take a, you know, remember that. I will uh, bring out the NYSE. Someone's asked me to take a look at that again. Uh, we'll look at that on the daily basis, and you'll see that uh, we have made a, a double top. We're down a few days from that, but uh, really nothing. You know, we didn't do any damage technically to anything as of yet, uh, which is a normal four or five day correction is all we're all we're seeing here in this. And so we're going to take a break here with the Dow rallying and gold selling off. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. 
By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day. Available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally. So there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability. Available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next. The Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Okay, folks, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the Bradley model because uh, we have a key Bradley date is due today. Uh, well, it was actually due uh, on the 4th, but uh, we're close enough to it. What is it? Oh, my God, today's the... Uh, the tell tomorrow's the anniversary of 911. Holy cow! We have to remember that. We got to have a moment of silence uh, for that. Uh, anyway, this is the. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a little bit of history about 911. I don't know if you know this or not, folks, but the the lowest payout that anybody of those 2,800 people got from the government was 1.4 million dollars. I believe the highest payout was uh, about seven million dollars, and uh, I believe that. Uh, uh, that that's an un unbelievable. When you stop and think that one of our soldiers that dies in action gets thirty-three thousand dollars, so that's not fair. But 
you know, I think we should be like Israel, and everybody should be a member of the army. So if we ever get caught in a situation where we have a, a hostage situation, we should be treated like prisoners of war. That's my feeling. I'm getting off my soapbox and get back to the Bradley model. Anyway, uh, we have a Bradley date here. You can see the potential double top that we've had here in the Dow Jones. That's the same one like the New York Stock Exchange Index. The market is much weaker now than it was back in uh, October of 2007 when it was making a new high because the, the Dow was making a 1.27 expansion at that time. The New York Stock Exchange was making a 1.27 expansion. The NASDAQ was making a 1.27 expansion. The S&P was making a 1.27 expansion. And only the S&P and the DAX have made these expansions. The New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the biggest, and the Dow Jones have not been able to do that. Uh, the same thing is true with the Russell. Even during this last rally on the Russell, it has not made a double top. It's only made a 61% uh, retracement. So that's how I'm looking at the market from a you know, technical standpoint but, and cycle standpoint. But we are over some critical levels uh, as we speak in here. And if we do go into new high ground on the Dow, uh, then that will uh, tell us that we're probably going to go higher yet. But the the party is almost over, folks. When you see something like what happened in Barron's this week where they showed that the bears were at 13-year uh, lows, uh, you better pay attention because those are the things that uh, really uh, really light up the Christmas tree uh, on the downside once they start because there's nobody left to buy and you have a vacuum underneath the market. We have such low volume this time. It's a uh, it's a very very scary situation, and we have all these different options and swaps and all this other stuff, uh, credit default swaps and things. It's just really amazing all the the vehicles that we have for uh, weapons of mass destruction in the financial markets. Whether that will happen or not, you know, I don't know. But we do have higher interest rates coming. The bond market is certainly tell us telling us that. We're at a real critical level in the U.S. dollar index up here at 85. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, we need to get a little bit more weakness in the euro, which is 53% of the dollar index. Get the euro down to about 128, and that would complete that dollar index level uh, that is so very, very important. So just remind yourself that that's what we're watching and to keep in mind that uh, – yeah, these markets can move very, very dramatically, and you have to protect yourself. You can see yesterday, you know what happened in Apple when it went from 103 to 100 to 103 to 94 in a matter of uh, 20. I think about maybe it was about an hour or so. With the news was basically the same. There was nothing, anything different that happened. It's just that the traders just uh, decided to take profits, and when you sell, the guy looks at you and says, "To whom?" There's nobody left to buy, and then it drops. So keep in mind, so live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. You've heard Basil Chapman on the air as the host of the Tiger Technician's Hour, and now's your chance to spend a full day learning his trading methodology, the Chapman Wave. Basil has taught thousands of students his trading methods over the years, and on Friday, September 12th, he'll be hosting a one-day online Master Trader Series class. Included is a month of his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $128 value. Basil will cover a variety of topics and techniques that he uses when looking at key charting patterns that repeat consistently in the market and that you can add to your trading methodology. You have access to the full eight-hour archive for a period of 30 days, as well as availability to ask questions of Basil in the month following the course as you practice what he teaches in this full-day Master Trader class. For all the details, visit TFNN.com and sign up for Basil Chapman's Master Trader class on Friday, September 12th. Reserve your seat today. You're watching Tiger TV.